What's up, Rebels? It is Chunky Monkey Forty here. Let me get a drink really quick. Yoo-hoo, Mountain Dew. <laughs> As y'all saw by that little teaser in the beginning, I'm gonna be telling the story of how we ended up in Nashville, hanging out with Kid Rock and Tucker Carlson at the Honky Tonk. So let's get right into it, but first be sure to leave a like and also subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to go and check out all of my reaction videos to Kid Rock's new Bad Reputation album. I reacted to every single song on the album. I'll link those videos at the top of the description and then right below that will be a link to my website website, ChunkyMonkey40.com, where you could purchase Orange Cars Matter posters, stickers, and shirts, plus a brand new design I have available, and it means a lot to me. It's very deep and serious. It's, uh, to make a long story short, y'all know I'm a fan of the Dukes of Hazard, and I'm a fan of the General Lee. Well, uh, I generally don't give a fuck. I got these available as stickers, and if you guys would like to get yourself one, ChunkyMonkey40.com, so be sure to go and check those out if you're interested. But anyways, so it was me, my brother, his girlfriend, and her two sisters all down in Nashville. We went down there to go and see Morgan Wallen live. He had three sold out shows at Bridgestone Arena. We were going to the second night, and we decided to plan a Nashville trip around it. So we loaded up and headed on down there. Nine hours later, after the long drive from Michigan, you know, we get to Nashville, we get to our Airbnb. This place was badass. It had a pool table, ping pong table. It had shuffleboard. It had everything you could think of. It was super cool. And so we messed around there for a little bit, all got ready to head on downtown. We headed on down there and my buddy Hunter, who lives in Nashville, he had had a table reserved for us at Kid Rock's Honky Tonk. So that first night we went on down to the Honky Tonk. Guys, does he need a fucking mullet? I think he needs a mullet. You need a mullet, Hunter. No, you no, need a fucking mullet. No. Yeah. Have you ever seen a redhead with a mullet? No, that's why we need to. No. It would look good on you, dude. Grow like little fucking side and shit. Chops? Yeah, you get little mutton chops. Mutton chops. That'd be awesome. <laughs> John Stone, yeah, it was John Stone's band who was playing up on stage. John Stone unfortunately wasn't there. I'm pretty sure he had to go like wrangle some cows or some shit. The band was up on stage. They fucking killed it. They did a great job performing that night. After we were there for a couple hours, we headed on home because we had the concert the next day on Thursday. So we go downtown. We go explore. Uh, we went to the Country Music Hall of Fame, which was awesome. Saw some really cool stuff in there, including the handwritten lyrics of Where Were You When the World Stopped Turning by Alan Jackson, which was beautiful beautiful to me considering I just did a documentary on the World Trade Center last year and so to see the original lyrics of that song well it wasn't the actual piece of paper you know it's just a blown up picture of it but to see how fast he wrote that song I just was so fascinated with it it was awesome in the museum they also had the real car from Smoking the Bandit 2 the car was owned by Jerry Reed after they shot the movie and if you don't know who Jerry Reed is uh Amos Moses eastbound and down <laughs> he was the snowman on Smoking the Bandit anyway after that we went downtown, had a blast for a while, went into the concert, and dude, Morgan Wallen, poof, fucking great show, man. He puts on an awesome show. The stage is shaped like an M and a W. It's so badass. 
ass. And the light, like we were way high up at Bridgestone. I mean, we had shitty seats. I'll be straight up. But we still got to really enjoy the show just because of the screens alongside. I mean, it was so fascinating to see how I put that show together. And I just kept thinking like, how the hell did they come up with all these ideas? Like, it seemed like every song, the color theme for it and the lighting was perfect. They had a border to go on the jumbo screen for every song too. It was perfect. And then to make it even better, Eric Church came out and sang one of my favorite songs, Quitting Time, with Morgan Wallen. So we were already having a blast, you know. So after that, we all went downtown Nashville. I'm not 21, so I couldn't get into any other bars except for Kid Rocks. So I went and hung out at Kid Rocks Bar while my group did other things, you know. Then we headed back to the Airbnb, went to bed, woke up again the next day, Friday, hung out downtown again, had a blast. Went and saw basically everything you could see down there. I'm not going to bore you guys with all the damn details. Uh, a place that stood out was the Wild Horse Saloon. That was really cool. Oh yeah, and then me and my brother, we rented those fucking scooters. You know those ones where you slide your debit card on and you could go for a ride on them? Me and my brother rode around on those for like 30 minutes. It was awesome. It was fun. We were racing all around Nashville and shit. Then Saturday came around. In the morning, we went on a nature walk. We went out to Cheatham County, Kingston Springs to be specific. We went on a beautiful nature walk at Narrows of the Harpeth. It was awesome. Narrows of the Harpeth was beautiful. It's like this big fucking thin mountain that you could just climb. And then there's some beautiful scenic overlooks. Then there was this badass waterfall tunnel at the bottom of it. We went and checked that out. I climbed to the top of it actually, which wasn't that hard. It was literally, it was like a pyramid almost. It was just step after step after step. But Saturday was supposed to be our last day in Nashville. So we didn't really want to do too much. I was like, well, let's just end it hanging out at Kid Rock's Honky Tonk, you know? So we went back downtown again. We stopped at this fucking, uh, I don't even know what it was called. It was like really girly. The, the Hampton, that's what it was. It was the Hampton. They all got their drinks. I just sat there on my phone, posted on Instagram, getting banned. I took this fucking picture. There was this sign in there that said Rose all day. And I was like, man, I got to take a picture in front of that. That'd be so funny. So I laid down, posted it on Instagram and I captioned it. Basic ass white bitches be like, and then within an hour I was fucking banned on Instagram, which was stupid. I still don't understand why I got banned for that. I've said way worse shit on Instagram. But yeah, so now I'm like, shit, I'm banned. I can't go live at the honky tonk. Damn it. So I asked my brother if I could borrow his phone to take some videos. And so that's why it took me a minute to get this video put together because my brother had all the footage. <laughs> but I got the footage now and I'm about to show you what happened. So we were just hanging out, you know, we were standing on the main floor right in front of the stage, you know, rocking out. Dean James was up on stage fucking killing it. And next thing you know, the whole bar, the attention goes from the stage whew, right up to Cadillac Pussy.
wasn't just Kid Rock who was there, it was also Tucker Carlson and his film crew. That was really fucking cool. We were seeing like his film crew, like me as a video nerd, I'm like, that's a badass camera rig. That's a sweet one. You know, I'm checking out the camera rigs and shit and then Kid Rock walks in and Tucker Carlson too. And we're seeing them up on the railing looking down at the band playing. I waved up there. Him and Audrey, Kid Rock's fiance, they look down, they wave back at me and then, you know, they talk for a minute, look back down. And both Kid Rock and Audrey were just like, come on. So we all went up the stairs, you know, we went up to the side and Cadillac was so packed so that then when we got up the stairs, my crew was told to just stand right outside the door just because it was so packed with Tucker Carlson's film crew and everybody else in there, you know. But they had cleared off that entire side of the building. They had it all roped off. So Lucas, Daniela, Kata, and Patri, they all got their own section in the building. But then they bring me into Cadillac and immediately, right as I walk in the door, Kid Rock, how you doing, man? It was so fucking cool, man. And Audrey, Rock's fiance, took some pictures of us, you know. And then we talked for a little bit and I actually showed him the General Lee Don't Give a Fuck design. I showed him the rough sketch of it. I'll put it up on the screen of what I had showed him. And he laughed because he says that all the time. I mean, he owns a General Lee, so. They call me the General because I generally don't give a fuck. <laughs> then he brought Tucker on over and he introduced me to him. We talked for a minute. And Tucker Carlson, I love watching him on Fox News. He's one of my favorite guys to watch. I'd say he's the only good one on Fox News, honestly, right about now. Him and Hannity are really the only two who are actually honest. And the reason Tucker Carlson was there in the first place was because he had just filmed an interview with Kid Rock right before they went downtown. And then him and Tucker were flexing their watches and shit, you know, because Kid Rock gave him the gold one that he wore in that interview. And then he gave me the silver one. It isn't the one in the interview, but it's badass because you could see it in the picture that I took with Kid Rock. I gotta set that mom dude on. My hands are getting cold. But yeah, they were joking and they were like, hey, what time is it? I don't know, too shiny to tell. That's why I did that in all the reaction videos. Anyway, enough of me talking. I'm gonna play the clip you guys are really waiting for. After we all hung out for a little bit, Kid Rock took the stage and this is what happened. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you. 
sorry I couldn't show the entire clip of Kid Rock on stage at the Honky Tonk. The reason for that is because they are saving that full performance for the Tucker Carlson original special that's going to air later on this year. I've been told that that full performance is going to be included in the special, but I put out as much as I was able to. Y'all see that? I loved how I walked off stage to a Let's Go Brandon chant. I thought that was super cool. And by the way, big shout out to Laura Church. She's the one who shot that second perspective down below. I wanted to include that second perspective just to change it up a little bit. And plus, then you could actually see me in the camo shirt with my jacket tied around my waist. I just thought that clip was really cool. So thank you for letting me use that, Laura. But yeah, so after Bob got off stage, he took a picture with Tucker Carlson. I got a little clip of that. took the stage again. I started talking with some people up in Cadillac Pussy. If you've never been to Kid Rock's Honky Tonk, that's the name of the VIP section, by the way. There was a girl down on the dance floor and she was waving up at everybody and someone said to me, hey, you should throw your hat down there. And I was like, fuck it. bums me out because I just bought that hat, but oh well. I'll be back to Nashville to get myself another one. But after that, Cadillac started to clear out. Tucker Carlson and his video crew left, and then it was just Bob and his friends, you know? And that was when I was able to bring my brother, his girlfriend, and her two sisters inside Cadillac to get to meet Kid Rock, which, dude, that was so fucking cool. Which, thank you, Bob, again, for being willing to take pictures with them and whatnot. That was just awesome, man. I mean, it was so cool getting to see my brother get to meet him, you know? I mean, he's he grew up just like me. We always listened to Kid Rock. His music was always playing, no matter where the fuck we were. Our parents listened to Kid Rock on the boat all the time. Our Uncle Brian listened to him. Our parents' friends were always listening to him. I was always listening to him. So Lucas had known Kid Rock's music. He's been to a couple concerts with me. But it was super cool. We got our pictures and everything. Talked with him for a while. My buddy Hunter showed up with some of his buddies. I talked to him for a while too. You know, that was awesome. He's one of my best friends. It sucks he lives so far away in Nashville. But every time I'm down there, I always try to link up with him as much as I can to get to hang out with him. But man, what a great weekend that was. Good times at Kid Rock's big ass honky tonk. <laughs> if you guys haven't been there, I highly recommend you guys go. It's literally the, like, I wasn't kidding my group when I told him it was the coolest bar in Nashville. And sure enough, they were like, yeah, it's pretty much the coolest one. But guys, that's the full story on what happened when I was in Nashville right before Bad Reputation dropped. I know I talked a little bit about it here and there in my reaction videos, which again, if you haven't watched those yet, I highly recommend you go check those out. And check out Kid Rock's Bad Reputation album if you haven't yet, dude. It is fucking fire. The best 
country rap album of the year goes to Kid Rock. Songs like Am What I Am, Never Quit, We The People. Dude, it's fucking fire. Don't tell me how to live. My favorite right now on there is uh, I'm Torn Between Never Quit and She's Your Baby Now Rocker. Incredible album. I had a blast reacting to all the songs. Only it sucked that I couldn't just sit down and listen to it all in an hour. But it was a lot more fun to get to enjoy one song at a time. I thought that was kind of cool to do, you know? And to pace myself too, because I mean, I've been hyped for this album for years. It's been since 2017 since Kid Rock dropped an album, because the last one he dropped was Sweet Southern Sugar in 2017. So, anyways, with all that said and out of the way, I am Chunky Monkey 40 at YouTube.com. Stay rebel, motherfuckers. And let's go, Brandon. Just Good old boys Never mean no harm